I realized when working with some of you on mastering chemistry after class today, um, we were particularly in Chapter 6, Thermochemistry, Section 6-7, and one of the questions in particular caught my attention. It's number 40 in your Mastering Chemistry online homework. I'm going to go ahead and work that out here, but while I do that, I'm going to clear up a couple concepts which I think um, are why pretty much everybody's getting confused on these problems, including me. These This problem, and then there's at least one other, um, really are combined like three problems into one question. Um, so it's m much higher level than I would probably, well, than I would definitely ask on your next test. But it definitely might be something that would be worth as a bonus question. So, and the concepts are certainly concepts that you should understand. I may not just combine them all into one question like this one is done. So anyway, let me start working out this. Again, it's number question number 40 in section 6, 7. And um, it asks about a reaction between sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. And it actually asks you to calculate enthalpy, delta H of reaction. But the information it gives you, like change in temperature and mass, et cetera, um, lets you know should trigger um, the realization that you have to use a QM cat formula and solve for Q. Now, I have told you in our classroom that for all practical purposes, Q heat is the same thing as enthalpy. That is true under constant pressure. So as long as a reaction is being done open to the atmosphere or not any special pressurized conditions, it is under constant pressure. And so these two are essentially equal. They do have some differences, though, so I want to make sure you understand that. Delta H, enthalpy of reaction, by convention, is always the heat released or absorbed for a reaction exactly as a, the balanced reaction is written. So delta H for this reaction between sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid would be the quantity of heat involved in one mole of sodium hydroxide reacting with one mole of hydrochloric acid. If the balanced reaction had a 2 in front of sodium hydroxide, then the delta H expressed um, would be the amount of heat involved for 2 moles. But clearly in this case, the balanced reaction just has one, one to one. So the delta H value that you need to answer this question with has got to match this reaction, which is for one mole of sodium hydroxide. So keep that in mind. However, now the QM-CAT reaction is where Q is heat, is the amount of heat for any old quantity given to you that you happen to plug in for mass. And so the Q that we're going to get originally in this problem, we then have to convert using a conversion factor into heat per mole for delta H. So I'll walk you through that. The other thing is the sign convention for both of them. Um, as you know, hopefully, enthalpy, if, it's, if the reaction is or the process is exothermic, enthalpy will have a negative sign. If the reaction is endothermic, if it absorbs heat, the delta H will have a positive sign. You may have noticed in trying to work through some of these mastering chemistry problems that it's a little bit confusing because sometimes Q will be positive and the delta H will be negative. It seems like they should match. So I'm going to go to the next page now and explain to you how the signs of these two heat things might be different. All right, so delta H a reaction, and most of the time we calculate those. Remember delta H from either Hess's law or the heats of formation that are from some table. Um, those are expressed at the P of reaction for the system itself. Remember the system is the actual chemicals, the actual chemical reaction that you're studying. In this case, it would be with from the perspective of sodium hydroxide and HCl. But we can't stick a thermometer in the middle of sodium hydroxide and HCl molecules. It's just not feasible. So what we do instead is we put sodium hydroxide and HCl into some medium or solvent, usually water. Okay? And 
So here, here I have an example down here. Um, a made up calorimeter. We fill it with water. We dump in HCl and NaOH. And what are we measuring the temperature for? We are measuring the temperature for water. Is water part of the system? No. Water is part of the surroundings. So when we do calorimetry, and when we do calorimetry we get Q, okay, that is measuring the heat given off or absorbed by the surroundings. Delta H is always for the system. So the bottom line out of all this is for the most part, and, and I went through a bunch of problems, I think all the way the problems are worded here, the delta H will be, of reaction, will be minus Q. How do you know that with 100% certainty? Well, the bottom line is, if you're doing a calorimetry problem and solving for Q, pay attention to the change in temperature, okay? If the temperature is going up, so let's say it starts at 20 degrees Celsius. Whatever you do, you, may, you have a chemical reaction or whatever you do, if it goes, if the temperature of the water rises, if it goes up to, let's say, 25 degrees Celsius, that means there's an exothermic reaction or process going on in the water. So the system released heat, and that heat raised the temperature of water. Okay. If the temperature of the water raised, that means there's an exothermic process going on, which means when you express delta H, it needs to have a negative value. So I'm going to go ahead and do the um, example. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start working this. I've just up to now written down all the information the problem gives you. Um, I'm going to start over with temperature just because it's an easy place to start. They gave me the initial and final temperature, so I'm going to go ahead and calculate delta T. It's always TF, final temperature, minus initial temperature. So delta T is exactly 2 degrees. All right, so we have delta T. And anytime you're given an initial and final temperature, it's pretty much a red flag to you that you're probably going to be using the QMCAT equation. So now we've got to figure out what all we're trying to solve for. The problem is asking for uh, delta H of reaction and we know that under constant pressure um, that is equal to Q and so we are trying to solve for Q and as far as the mass Anytime you're given volumes like we are here, you will need density to get from volume milliliters to grams. And so if you read this problem carefully at the very end, it says assume the density of the solution is the same as water, and the density of water is exactly one. One gram per milliliter, what does that mean? That means that one gram of water is exactly equal to one milliliter of water. And since they said the NaOH HCl solution also has a density of one, that means what is our total volume? Our total volume of this solution is 200 milliliters. Since they're saying the density is one gram per milliliter, that means that we have 200 grams. That is our mass that we will plug into QMCAT. We have our delta T, we have our mass. If you read the end of the question, it also says assume the specific heat capacity is the same as that for water, which is 4.184. Units for specific heat capacity are joules per gram per degree Celsius. Okay, That's important because a lot of these problems will ask you to express a heat answer in kilojoules. You need to keep in mind when you're using the QMCAT formula, your units are going to be joules, not kilojoules. So keep that in mind in case you need to do a conversion. Okay, so now we're ready to plug in. We have all the values we need for QMCAT. So let's see what Q is for these 200 grams 
of solution. was at two degrees, right? All right, so if you plug those into your calculator, you get, okay, you get that Q is 673.6 joules. What quantity is that for? So at this point, you need to look at um, the question again carefully because they ask you to express delta H of reaction in units of kilojoules per mole of NaOH. Okay, so they want it in terms of NaOH. So now our Q, let's put it in terms of NaOH. We generated 1,673.6 joules and how much NaOH did we have? How many moles of NaOH did we have? You can find that out from looking at the information given in the problem. We were told that we had 100 milliliters of 0.3 molar NaOH. So how do you get moles from volume and molarity? You just multiply. We do have to convert the milliliters to liters. Um, so let's see, 100 milliliters is the same thing as 0.100 liter. So let's see, we have 0.100 liter of sodium hydroxide times the molarity of the sodium hydroxide we're using. Molarity is just moles per liter. Okay, so our liters cancel, and so we have in this reaction 0.03 moles of sodium hydroxide. Okay. So the amount we calculated up here for Q was for this specific amount, which is 0.03 moles. Okay, so I want you to kind of put that in your back pocket. All right, so onward to the next page to convert Q, and Q into delta H. All right, so we're going to use this as a conversion factor. You can leave it in this exact form. I'm going to go ahead and simplify it just because I want to. And so in simplified form, Q is... 55,787, get your units right, joules per mole. Okay. So if you look back at our reaction, that's exactly what we wanted, okay? We want the, the delta H heat of reaction, which is for the balanced chemical equation, which is exactly one mole of sodium hydroxide. So here is your answer. So you got to be careful of units, though, because the units in the possible answers are kilojoules per mole. So we have to divide this by 1,000. And that means 55.8 kilojoules per mole. Okay. So I guess the bottom line is if you're you're starting if you're solving Q and you ultimately have to express your answer in terms of enthalpy delta H, you want to take the Q value that you calculate, you want to divide it by the number of moles in the problem and then simplify it so that you get units of joules per mole. And delta H reaction always has units of joules per mole. Now one last comment about the sign. When we work with Q, we got a positive sign, but you'll notice that once it's expressed as delta H, it must be given a negative sign. I'm going to explain why. I'm hoping that it sinks in. The Q 
the energy change we measured was for water. Thermometer was stuck in water. And so from the water's perspective, um, the water absorbed heat. Okay, So the water, from its perspective, it took in heat. It was plus. Okay, Delta H always expresses the heat transfer from the perspective of the system itself. It's the system itself that was giving off the heat that water absorbed. So from the system's perspective, delta H reaction has a minus sign. If that doesn't make sense, you'll have to kind of keep working toward it. Um, worst case scenario, if you can't understand it, just make sure when you're transferring from Q to delta H that you change the sign. Okay? Well, that's it for this.